Good morning, everybody. So, whenever we think of a startup or a business, I feel the most important is choosing one particular name of your brand from a pool of thousands of names. For me, I was very sure that I wanted a name with one tablespoon of commonness, two tablespoon of uniqueness, and a pinch of quirkiness complementing my vision. This was my perfect recipe for a brand name. Maybe this can be a tip for the upcoming businesses, maybe not. I, being born and brought up in Odessa, have always been searching for good food, searching for food which is unique in its nature, but have felt that there is a gap in the culture of food here. It's very basic. It's not like a Ferrari. When we think of Ferrari, it has great experience, it's comfortable, it has wow looks. So similar kind of experiences I have had in cuisines and food I've tasted all over the world, thanks to my parents that I was blessed to be born in a family of foodies who also gave me the opportunity to taste multiple cuisines all over the world. But the main thing was, why does Bhuvneshwar do not have? And I wanted to bridge this gap. So, one day I thought to myself, how can I do this? But I had no clue. But there was one thing crazy about me, that I always wanted to my, share my food experiences with people I know. I started cooking when I was 10 years old. Since then, none of my known ones have ever had food poisoning. You can bet on that. But every time they tasted my food, they wanted to taste these foods regularly. This motivated me. I was going on with my studies with no direction. Suddenly there's a point in life, which I guess everybody has, when everyone in your family is suddenly interested in your life. What are you doing? What's your plan? I was bombed with all these questions as soon as I completed my graduation. I was zip. I was numb. I did not know what to say because I did not have a plan. But I thought, Vidisha, it's okay to not have a plan. So I did the obvious thing which everybody does after graduation, that's MBA. But this choice of mine doing MBA changed my life. My teachers, my faculties did not just only focus me to studies, but helped me unfold pages of my life and know in which direction I wanted to go. And this journey of two years in MBA helped me research, know more about food, know more about this food and beverage industry. And as soon as I completed my MBA, I marched into this new world of food and beverage with my baby steps, but I had no one to hold my finger through and make me walk down the aisle. I was all alone. But I had just one mantra in my head. Discuss, talk to anybody and everybody you know and get essence of their experience and put it in your business. That is the best thing you can do because people having experiences can, in any field, can help you work in your experience, build your experience. By doing so, I was amazed to see how all my struggles, my difficulties started getting solved. I got a lot of 
contacts, I got a lot of inspiration, motivation and I and my magically everything was sorted. I started working, the day of launch was there. I was standing at the gate and thinking whether this decision of mine will make me a success or will be a nightmare for lifetime thereafter. With this thought, the initial six, seven months was very difficult for me. There were few things which were majorly difficult which I would like to share. First, my restaurant served hardcore non-veg food and me, a hardcore vegetarian. <laughs> Having no clue of what this is, I can't bear the smell of it, I can't see it, I don't know. <laughs> but thanks to my hardcore non-vegetarian friends who made me smell it, see it and make that an easy cake to handle. And I accomplished that. Second major issue was, I was working with 25 men of 30 years around with a three to five years of experience in the food and beverage industry. And on the other hand was me, a little 22 year old girl with no experience in this field. And for them, it was difficult to be bossed by a girl who has no idea about this field. And suddenly she's telling them, do like this, not like this. But I was confident. I knew what I was doing. And I knew what I have to do. And I made sure they follow it. If not, I would make them understand in their language. Keeping them in my shoes and making them understand. That day I learned you can never be always a boss to them. You have to be a friend, you have to be a mentor, then only they can take you as a boss in their life. The third important thing was, when I started it initially, I had a feedback form system, which they gave it to the customers. As we say, customer is God in the service sector. So I never got a complaint there. It was all very good, all rosy pictures there. But when I saw my Zomato profile, my online profiles, it was not that rosy there. It has thorns. And I had to be very careful with those thorns, pluck it off, but I cannot harm that rose while plucking that thorn. And I did that. And I learned that whenever you are in a business <clears throat> which involves service sector, never depend on your staff or co-working people that they will give you the actual feedback what the customers are giving you. You should have a, maybe a digital technology is moving so fast, have a digital feedback system that will be the best. Everything's were going good and I had a chance to go to Bombay for some reason and just came across a restaurant there in Bombay named Masala Library, which turned my life upside down. I had no clue what this molecular gastronomy is and they were the first one to get this in India. I went there, the food came. For me, it was like in modern art. I cannot understand. But when I tasted it, it blew my mind off. It was an experience I had never had before. And I was, as I said before, I was crazy in sharing my experiences. I always wanted people I know to know those experiences. So basically this concept of molecular gastronomy was something like a combination of science and art where you actually combine scientific techniques with scientific chemicals to curate an art of food on your food palate. 
It's a treat to your eyes, to your mouth, to your senses and everything. So with that, I just wanted to come back to my hometown and do something with that. When I decided on doing it, it was like a mountain on the shoulders of me and my team. Because my team had no clue what I was talking about. They thought in Bombay I had an accident and I have gone, lost. But I knew what I had to do. So we had a research of around four to five months where I visited a lot of other places in Calcutta, in Bombay. And I got some of the good recipes and amazing cutleries which I wanted to introduce. But the major problem which I faced here was about the chemicals I require. It is all available in Bhuvaneshwar, but the problem was, okay, this is a funny incident I would like to share. So I went to a vendor who was supplying this particular chemical which I required. So he used to uh, give these chemicals to mines and everything. So mine, in mines they require like a 50 kilo or a 100 kilos or like that they require. But for me, I needed 500 grams of it. That will be enough for me. And when I when they asked that I need a 500 grams of that chemical, they looked at me from top to bottom and scanned me as if I have come from some other world and asking them of 500 grams of that thing. And they started inquiring that why do I require this? So I tried to explain them that I wanted it for a food and stuff like that. And they were like, and he thought I was someone who wanted to kill people. And to my amusement, he took my Aadhaar card Xerox to keep it as a proof that this person has taken for this particular reason. He took my FSSI certificate and everything to give me that camera. So these are such situations which we have to go through and handle it. It was difficult, but it is beautiful. Once you see things are coming in place after all these struggles you have. So another struggle which I had was with my staff again. So they were very scared to use these chemicals and equipments to make this particular thing. Because they were hurt, it will physically hurt them. But what I made sure was, one week, two weeks, I was standing in that kitchen, working with them day and night. So that they get confidence that if I can, they can. Because it's important for everybody to have a role model in their life. That will keep you self-motivated always. Because if your role model is doing great, you will also want to be in that position. And you will do it. You don't have to motivate them. That day I learned that to have a good bond with your working staff, you have to be a role model for them. Then it's easy to handle them, to work with them. Then again, one day I was just thinking, with all these experiences and things, where am I heading to? Is it, is that's it? Or I can go somewhere or I can explore pages. So that day I realized that everyone's life, the life glass of their, them, is always half filled. It's always half filled with the experiences. It can never reach the brim. Because at any age, you will learn something or the other. You will have an experience even when you are 60. It's not that a guy who's 60 years old, he will not have any more experiences in his life. He will still have some experiences. There is always a room to learn. So always keep that space within you empty to learn that one extra thing in your life. 
okay when everything was going one day i was sitting and i realized that everything around me is running at a very fast pace it's just like somebody has played a tape recorder and press the forward button and everything is running 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 so here i would just like everybody that once you go back from here once you are at home sit back breathe and take a pause take a moment to unpress that forwarded button and see how life becomes beautiful how life helps you unfold ways to achieve your dreams that's it thank you